Dental hygiene can be the heart of any practice as routine preventive care prevents caries, gum disease, and even more down the road. And today's dental hygienists have a wide variety of tools at their disposal to ensure oral health, including dental lasers. Today, we're speaking with Lynn Atkinson, RDH, a clinical director in Mission Viejo, California, about how she uses dental lasers in her daily work. Lynn, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Richard. It's very nice to be here. Okay, great. And uh, just to begin, um, our audience, of course, is familiar with routine dental hygiene visits. So where can hygienists begin to include dental lasers in that treatment? Well, it's not necessarily taking the place of any tools that we're using. So in the very beginning, you will have to maybe add a little bit of time to your treatment plan. But in the long run, we're going to see much better results um, with the tissue. So in that case, we're going to get you know less time in the appointment time. Plus, patients are very motivated. Um, they're going to be, um, you know, wanting to come back and continue their care and seeing the results that we're seeing. So lasers can be used. Um, I use them 95% of my day. Mm -hmm. uh, I have for 25 years, which is, is nice. It gives me not only that experience, but seeing the results with my patients. I use it for different procedures like uh, laser bacterial reduction or pocket therapy. Um, laser-assisted periodontal therapy or curatage or period debridement, mm -hmm. um, aptus ulcers, herpetic lesions, hemostasis, even some, you know, desensitizing and, and pain therapy. Okay, and based on your experience, what advantages do lasers have over more conventional treatment? Well, we're treating the tissue. Um, periodontal disease is really based on inflammation and we're treating that inflammatory disease. We're not just depending on removing deposits on the tooth and root surface, which in traditional methods, we were always scaling and root planing and removing the deposits off the tooth structure and the root structure, depending on that or um, requiring that to get the tissue back to health. And we weren't seeing a lot of resolvement in the tissue. Mm -hmm. And so now we can treat that tissue with the laser, with these soft tissue lasers. And the diode laser is the most utilized laser in the um, dental hygiene field. So we're treating that tissue. Um, as far as conventional methods, um, scaling and replaning, like I said, um, curatage was always taking, you know, the blade of an instrument, turning it inside out, and you were swiping out all of that tissue, healthy, the good, that bad, and the ugly. Now we're able to selectively debride that um, necrotic tissue, that unhealthy tissue, that infected tissue, because that diode laser is absorbed in that pigmentation and that hemoglobin. Okay, and so th these uh, laser procedures, they're less invasive, um, less painful, and I assume less bleeding for the patient? Yes, exactly. So a diode laser is, again, absorbed in two chromophores, maybe melan mainly melanin and hemoglobin. So um, it is reducing that bleeding, reducing the pain afterwards, any discomfort. I have several patients that um, had traditional scaling and root planning or even traditional surgical therapy. And now that they've gone through the laser periodontal therapy, um, they've never had to take any pain medications in the 25 years. I've, I've never had to recommend pain medications for a patient after doing laser periodontal therapy. Um, and they heal up much quicker because the tissue's healing. Okay. And you're uh, referencing diode lasers. Are there different types of lasers and are some more appropriate for um, some procedures than others? Are there any particular lasers that, that you use? So um, in the office here now, we have uh, three different lasers. We have two different diode lasers, the BioLase Epic X, which is a 940 nanometer laser. Mm -hmm. And it's a soft tissue laser and used for also for pain therapy and whitening procedures. And then we have the new Epic Hygiene laser, which I've been using for a little bit over a year. And that is a 980 nanometer laser. It's a diode laser as well, specifically designed for hygienists to do hygiene procedures within their parameters. 
Um, so we're, we're using it in the hygiene department with the diode laser. And then we also have the water, water laser I plus, which is an erbium laser mm -hmm. and a hard and soft tissue laser. So you've really got to decide where you want to go, what procedures that you want to be doing, um, to select the appropriate laser. Okay, and uh, many hygienists and even dentists themselves might be intimidated by um, some of this technology being trained or having experience in, in more um, analog, for lack of a better word, um, kinds of procedures. What kinds of training uh, do these different tools require? So there is a learning curve and I, I mentioned before that I've been doing this for 25 years and I'm still learning every day. As we know in dentistry that technology changes and what we were doing you know, 25 years ago or 10 years ago or even a year ago has changed. The physics of lasers has not changed and it never will. Mm -hmm. um, so if you understand those physics and you go through some of this training, some of the manufacturers have you know, online training, they have hands-on training. Um, BioLase is excellent with that. They have a lot of webinars, a lot of um, trainings that I'm involved with. And then um, also the Academy of Laser Dentistry is a wonderful resource for, um, for training and, and resources and getting certification in lasers. But I'd, I wouldn't suggest just, you know, reading about lasers and then picking up the tool and going to use it. And most clinicians aren't, that's what they're most afraid about. They, they read about it, maybe they'll take a, a course on it, but they're not comfortable with it. So I would highly suggest that you expand that knowledge and that education and just keep moving forward with that. Okay, so there are plenty of resources out there that uh, potential users could tap into. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And you mentioned how technology is changing, especially over the last year. Of course, the big news of the last year has been the pandemic. Um, what advantages to infection control do lasers have over convention, conventional methods? Well, that's a wonderful thing about lasers um, is that they don't produce aerosols, especially the diode laser. Mm -hmm. um, the, it, it's nice because we're using the laser bacterial reduction at the beginning of the appointment mm -hmm. and we're reducing that bacteria um, for the aerosol producing procedures that we may um, produce during that treatment. So it's a wonderful tool to be able to use. Um, maybe instead of or in addition to, I do it in addition to a pre-rinse mm -hmm. um, to really help selectively remove or reduce those pathogenic bacteria. The really, you know, uh, the really um, strong bacteria, those pigmented bacteria that are going to cause that type of um, inflammation and destruction and that will be in our aerosols. So it's a wonderful tool to use as a preventative measure. Okay, and not just uh, advantages in infection control, um, simply because of the, uh, the pain reduction, it's minimally invasive. Uh, do you see lasers having advantages for um, uh, certain populations like pediatrics or special needs or, or elderly patients? Yes, um, it, even in the diode laser realm, I mean the, the, the hard and soft tissue lasers, it's wonderful because we can do a lot without anesthetic or with minimal anesthetic. Mm -hmm. um, they can do, you know, fillings and, and periodontal procedures. I can do um, laser periodontal procedures where we're using very minimal local anesthetic, maybe some compound topical anesthetic. Mm -hmm. um, we can treat herpetic lesions without any anesthetic. You really don't want them anesthetized for something like that. And they leave the office um, in, in a comfortable position and they're in less pain and it keeps them coming back. Um, laser bacterial reduction, there is no discomfort involved in that. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a great way to introduce your patients to uh, lasers in dentistry and um, you can use it on a, uh, an infant, you can use it on a two-year-old and a 92-year-old. There's no contraindications to using that laser. So it's a, it's, it's a great way to say this is a laser. It's not going to, um, you know, cut your gums off. It's not going to cut your head off. It's not Star Wars. Uh -huh. um, it's, it's really less invasive. So have you had positive reactions from patients um, before and after using the laser? Have you had to walk them through initial nervousness? And then what's their reaction like after they've, they're finished with the treatment? 
So that's the best part of my career, my job, my profession is that introducing patients to lasers and having them be hesitant, whether it be the procedure, the anesthetic, everything comes together with the lasers and um, the results are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I have to say with every single patient that I, that I talk to before and after a procedure, they are all um, just blown away by the technology, the way their mouth feels. Um, they've never felt like that before. My gums have always bled. Um, they just thought that was normal. That's mm -hmm. just the way I am. That's the way my mom was. That's the way my dad was. Right. Um, and they go through this procedure, and especially those that have gone through even traditional scaling and root planing, and then they go through the laser periodontal therapy. They say this was nothing like that. Um, so it's a lot less invasive. And then patients that go through the um, the dental department with the erbium laser, they get fillings done without anesthetic. They get um, a lot of things done without anesthetic. So it's it's wonderful. So would you say that lasers could even be an advantage in terms of a word of mouth marketing so that it, it helps retain patients and potentially attract new patients? Um, that's where we get a lot of our patients. Um, they, they leave here, whether they give a testimonial, whether they tell us, they tell friends, they tell family members, um, you, you've got to go to this dentist. They're using lasers. They're using all the technology that surrounds those lasers. It's not just the lasers itself, but it, it's all the protocols and parameters that we're using around those lasers. Um, so we get a lot of internal patient um, referrals and external patient referrals. Okay, and, and as you said, laser technology itself, it hasn't, well, the, the physics behind lasers haven't changed in 25 years, but new applications are always being developed. Looking ahead, what kinds of applications do you see the uh, dental lasers beginning to tackle? Well, we've been doing photobiomodulation for years with lasers, um, which is um, a low level light therapy, um, used to be called low level light therapy. And it's used for pain management, oral mucositis, um, TMJ, mm -hmm. um, pain in a lot of different areas, trigeminal neuralgia, they're doing a lot of work with that. Um, I find it very intriguing, very interesting. Um, it's, it's a whole new world that can open up to lasers and you can use the lasers that you have in your office, even the diode lasers, to be able to perform some of these procedures with photobiomodulation. And I just think that's going to be um, so helpful for a lot of these patients that are in discomfort that maybe go through cancer therapy and um, they're, they're not able to eat, they're not able to continue the, the treatment um, because of how painful it is. And these can really um, help the patient um, manage that pain and get through that treatment. So I, I think that opens up a whole new world of, of lasers. Okay, and, and as these new applications open up, what are some of the best ways for hygienists and dentists to keep up with those applications? They might already be using a laser for specific procedures and have for years and years. How do they find out there's something new they can do? Um, there are plenty of uh, resources. Um, like I mentioned, BioLase is great. They'll, they'll, you know, they have webinars, they have information on their website. Um, Academy of Laser Dentistry or ALD um, is a great resource to go through and um, you can find you know, not only certification courses, webinars, trainings, um, information, blogs, all that kind of information. It's, it's wonderful with the world of the internet that we can just you know, plug and play now. Okay, and one more thing then. Is there anything else you'd like to add about the state of today's laser treatment and the advantages that it has or how people could uh, find out more? Well, I think that the standard of care has changed, which I use all the time in my practice. That's my verbiage. The standard of care has changed and we're moving into the world of lasers and it's becoming more acceptable. Um, and the reason it's becoming more acceptable is because colleagues, dentists, um, hygienists, um, professionals are seeing the results with their very eyes. Um, I, you know, I look at the research and the research is very difficult, um, especially in the hygiene department. So I would say, you know, talk to 
talk to hygienists, talk to doctors, talk to um, professionals that have been using the lasers for a long period of time, even a short period of time, every single one of them is going to tell you that they're seeing the results. They're seeing the results clinically and they're hearing the results from their patients and they're retaining those. Um, the, the, the resources are out there, um, constantly changing. Um, like I said, um, keep up with um, you know, certain lasers, the, um, the BioLase, ALD. They're just wonderful resources to go through. Um, people always, you can contact me. Everybody that uses lasers, they're very open to talk about their experience and, and lend some education. We're very open to that. Great. Well, thank you for sharing your experience and your expertise with us today. We look forward to hearing more about um, how dental lasers can improve the standard of care. Thanks again. Thank you.